<clears throat> so tonight we're going to be looking at the reasons that the United States joined into World War II. And you're going to notice a lot of similarities between uh, the reasons that we joined World War I and World War II. So keep in mind this guiding question, what were the major reasons that the United States joined in World War II? So just in looking at the American response to thing, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the European response because you've already talked about that in 6th and 7th grade, and this is a U.S. history class, so it's important for us to keep in mind the United States perspective. But we're going to be, as the United States, introduced into what was going on in Europe through the movies. Um, you're going to start to see more and more um, movies that focused on... Hitler and Mussolini, who were dictators during the time period. And it wasn't like full-length movies like you're used to seeing, but instead it was these little commercial blurbs that were in front of the movies. Um, so you might get to go see Gone with the Wind or something along those lines. And then before you actually saw Gone with the Wind, you would see pictures of the troops marching in Germany or Benito Mussolini in Italy. It was very frightening to the American public and it was also a little bit of a form of propaganda to, to kind of incite that fear within the United States. So um, we're going to see uh, a lot more on comfort as more and more people are exposed to these dictators and we know that dictators are rulers who exercise complete control over their countries. So keep in mind that idea of there being really a lot of concern and panic in the United States during this time period. So there were a lot of memories left over from World War I, a lot of families that had suffered at least one, if not two or three deaths. So we really um, supported this idea overall of isolationism, which is a policy of staying out of the f affairs of other nations. So just minding our own business, just doing kind of our thing. Um, but like I was just saying, there were three major dictators that rose to power during this time, and uh, these were results of the Great Depression and results of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, and I want us to get a little background on these leaders before we spend a whole lot of time talking about them in class tomorrow, because um, I want you to make sure that you recognize these names. Um, in Italy, we had Mussolini, and he really, really uh, focused on this idea that Rome should return to the way it had once been. You know, in ancient times, Rome was a huge city, and it had a lot of power, and so he focused on bringing the Italians back to that time period. Hitler was still really, really upset with the defeat in World War I and the Treaty of Versailles and how Germany was treated during the Treaty of Versailles. He also felt like, hey, this is a good time to really place the blame on one group or organization. And he chose to place a lot of the blame for the Great Depression and the treaty on the Jews. He's also going to look at some other minority groups, but the focus is going to be on the Jewish community. And then we have Hirohito, who was the Japanese leader, and he talked about Japan achieving this great power. And his first step was to invade Manchuria in 1933. The world, you know, watched this happen. We were upset by watching it happen. But once again, there was this idea of isolationism that kind of prevented us from becoming too involved in what was going on, especially in Asia. Asia seemed really far away to the United States at this time. So Hitler creates a political party that took power very, very, very quickly. It was almost scary. I mean, it was scary how fast the Nazis took power. We're going to look at some graphs and charts that display that rise of power tomorrow in class. Um, but they, basically, they wanted to use this use of power in order to bring Germany back to what it had been in previous years. So by 1945... The Nazis had managed to wipe out more than 6 million Jews. And you've talked about that in language arts, the Holocaust, and um, how it affected the European community. 
Um, as far as the United States perspective, we really didn't have an idea that things were going quite as poorly as they were going for the Jewish community. Um, it was shocking when we realized what exactly was going on to the Jews and others. Um, so some of the other groups that were involved are in the Holocaust with the Jewish community, any kind of opponent of the Nazi, so any political party that was formed against the Nazis, uh, labor leaders, so that would be union leaders, uh, Roman Catholics, gypsies, and he even targeted the disabled. We're going to look at some of the things that he did to these people, and I'm sure you've, you've talked about it with um, in language arts as well. But he really, really treated these people horribly. Um, and like I said, millions of others, six million people died. And that number, six million, kind of goes back and forth depending on the historian that you're talking to. There are people that believe that the Holocaust never even happened. Of course, we can kind of look at them as a little bit kooky right now, but there are people that say that this is a figment of the imagination of the United States and other nations. So it's, um, you know, once again, that's kind of an interesting side of history is the many different interpretations that people have. So Hitler is going to progress throughout Europe really quickly. He is going to take over Poland, which is going to cause a lot of concern for the Allies, and then he's going to move into France, which is when, you know, the United States is really going to start to pay attention to what was going on. So by 1940, uh, Hirohito and Japan are going to join the Axis powers, they're going to join the Nazi powers. Um, which is going to make this a world war because once you know an Asian country became involved, it really we're going to start to see more and more countries fall as well. Um, nations around the world are going to start to take sides, but the United States really, really wanted to remain neutral. They wanted to keep isolationist. What is going to eventually change our mind are two events that occurred in 1941. First of all, Ju um, in June, Hitler is going to break his pact with Stalin. So before um, 1941, Stalin and Hitler were working together. Um, Hitler's going to turn his back on Stalin and Russia and start to fight them as well. That's going to be a red flag for the Allied powers because we're going to see how power hungry Hitler really was and kind of what a loony bird he was in that process. And then on December 7th of 1941, we saw this in class, um, but the Americans awoke to the news of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Um, over 2,500 Americans died. Our naval fleet was, um, was really demolished during this. Um, it's one of the only attacks that we've seen on American soil, the other attack being the attacks of September 11th. Um, but shortly thereafter, on December 8th of 1941, the United States is going to declare war on Japan and Germany and the other Axis powers, um, which essentially is going to, that's going to be what brings us into the war. Um, so keep all of this in mind for our class discussion tomorrow. Don't forget to take some really thorough notes on this, and I will see y'all then. Bye!